Hello everybody and welcome to Database Knowledge. Today we will talk about DML triggers. Data manipulation language or DML trigger is a process that fires automatically when the data changes with update or delete or insert transaction. They can only be created in a table or a view. If we use DML triggers in a table, we can use them both ways, after the data change or prior to the data change. In the view, we can use them only prior to the data change. What is the difference between that? After the data change means the transaction happen anyway and then we can fire a process but prior to the data change we can make a check and then the result of this check we can decide whether to commit the transaction or roll it back before we get into creating a trigger it's good to understand the mechanism of how the trigger works trigger is using something called conceptual table this is where the trigger can identify exactly which rows were updated or deleted or inserted there are two conceptual tables that trigger used, inserted and deleted. If we insert a row in the main table where the transaction is taking place, this row is also created in the conceptual table inserted. That's where we can find out which rows were inserted. Same thing, when we delete a row from the main table, it is deleted from the main table, but it's also kept in the conceptual table deleted. That's how we can identify which rows were deleted. The updated rows, there is no conceptual table updated. The updated rows, they are kept in both tables. Actually, three of them in the main table and a copy before the update is kept in the deleted and another copy which where updated it is in the inserted table the conceptual tables are used only inside a trigger and once the transaction is done the trigger is fired these tables are no longer there let's have an example i made a small structure for a bank system which has tbl customers and tbl customers account foreign key to the customer id and we have here the transactions for and key to both of them. The script for creating these tables and the example of this video are all included with the video description in Google Drive. Okay, now we will make a very simple trigger to work with this table. We will create a trigger. We have to give it a meaningful name, TRG on the TBL customers after insert and update on. This is the table I want the trigger to work. What is the DML event is after insert and after update. This trigger will happen anyway. Most of the triggers created after DML event is something taken for granted. It will happen as long as the transaction is committed in the table. I will say as begin set none count on to stop extra result sets. And what I want this trigger to do, whenever I insert a customer in this table, it will change the date update and the date created to the current system date. Very simple update statement, but most important, I want the trigger to update only the rows which were inserted or updated. I will say where the customer ID and select the customer ID from the conceptual table inserted, which keeps the transaction updated and inserted. Here it is. And we create the trigger. Here it is. And the trigger is ready. So we need to try it. First, let us see, do we have any customers in that table? Nothing. So I will insert one customer. I will only uh, insert these three columns, SSN, full name, and the email. We run it and here we have it and the date is changed to the current system date. I will put another one in this table and I will look at the date again. So the time is slightly different. 
So that update happened when the trigger inserted a new row. Let us now try to update one of them. This number 10, for example. The time was 17, 21 for both of them, 32. I will put the time here just to have a reference. And I will update number 10 again. And let us see now. Let us check the time was 17, 21, 43. It become 17, 22, 39. So this trigger, the other one remains the same because I didn't update it. So this trigger works either way. If I insert or if I updated a row. But most of the complicated triggers are used when instead of we do something before the update, insert or the delete take place in the table. We will have another example of that. For these two customers, I created two accounts and this is the balance of each. And we don't have transactions for them. Here is a trigger to validate the transaction before it take place in the table. It will be trigger instead of means prior to the DML event. The DML event here will be insert. So this trigger will happen prior to the insert event. Here I will declare the transaction message to handle the messages or the errors it will go throughout the trigger. And here some other variables to take the transaction ID, the customer ID, the account ID, the name of the customer, the transaction date, transaction amount, and if it is outgoing amount, mean withdraw, money is being taken from the account. If it is zero, means it is incoming transaction, money is added to the account. And here is the balance. Good. First, as long as we have variables inside triggers, mean a variable can take one value at a time. So if I bulk data here, these variables cannot take these values one after another. So first thing, I need to disable this table to be bulked with data, means you only insert one row at a time. And this is very easy. We will count the number of rows from the conceptual table inserted. If they are more than one, I will set the message to only one transaction at a time and I will go to an error. Here is the error is down there. Here it is. It's a label to exit my process. So this is the first thing. We disable the bulk. Then I will begin try. I will select these variables from the inserted tables. I will take the customer ID, account ID, transaction date, and the amount, and if it is outgoing or not. It's a bit. It's either one or zero. And I will begin the transaction. First, I need to get the balance of this customers in order to know if this balance sufficient for the transaction amount or not. So I will take it from the customer accounts where the account ID equal to the account ID. I get it from the inserted table. So now I have the balance. Then we will make another check. If the transaction amount is zero, I will set the error message and I will roll back the transaction. Then I will go to the error to exit the process. Then we need to handle another case. If this is not outgoing transaction, means it's money coming to the account. So I will insert these values. I get it from the inserted table because instead of trigger, you hold the value before it goes anywhere and then you decide what we do with them. So I here take these variables I found in the inserted table and I will insert it to the transactions, right? And I will take the scope identity to know the transaction ID. This is 
one transaction. The second transaction is I need to update the customer accounts table with the new balance, which will be the old balance plus the transaction amount because this is not outgoing, this is incoming. And then I will get the system date to update the account balance date. Then I will make the transaction message equal to incoming transaction amount and here is the amount this is plus carton to go a new line and here is the date I will convert it to 100 style plus another line and I will say the current balance equal to the balance plus the transaction amount and I will convert this to in varchar because I am adding it to a text. I will commit the transaction and then I will go to another label. I will exit the process here and go to send email. We will see that in a minute. The second possibility if this transaction is outgoing means I am taking money from the account. So I need to check if the balance is sufficient or not. So if the balance is more than or equal to the transaction amount, I will do the same thing. Okay. I will commit the transaction in the table and update the balance equal to the balance minus the transaction amount. So also the same thing with the date. I will change the transaction message a little bit. It will be outgoing transaction and the date and the balance will be the old balance minus the transaction amount. And I will also go to the send email. The last case, which is the balance is less than the transaction amount. That means the balance is not sufficient. So I will set the transaction message insufficient balance and the date and the transaction amount. And I, of course, I will roll back the transaction and I will go to the error. And this is the end of the try. I will begin catch. Here I will select the transaction message again to any global error message that can happen which is not handling the trigger. Then I will end the catch. Here the send the notification email. I need to send an email to this guy to know the transaction. So I need the email address as a variable, email subject, email body, and email ID, which is the ID of the mail configured in MSDB. I will set the email address. I will get the email address from the customers where the customer ID equal to customer ID. Same thing for the name and the email subject. I will say DBK Bank, for example, transaction ID. I will take the transaction ID and I will set the message. Dear Mr. Mrs. I will take the full name from here and plus the transaction message the way it was configured for each case above. After we set all these parameters, I will send the email by using the stored procedure SP send DB mail from the MSDB database with these variables, email address, subject, transaction message, and the text format could be text or could be HTML. Yes, we can send an HTML email using SQL Server, no problem. The importance is high and the mail item ID. This is an output parameter from this stored procedure telling me the ID of the mail. So I can track it here in the MSDB under the view SysMail all items. So if this output ID come out with something, I will confirm the customer transaction that notification has been sent which is here in this column. I will set it to one and I will set the email ID just for tracking purpose whenever I need it. Where is the transaction equal to transaction ID? And here is the error. I will always print the error message, however it comes. And this is the trigger. Okay, so we create this trigger and we need to try it. Before we do something, we need to create another trigger to prevent any update or any delete for this transaction. Man, this is money. You cannot delete or update a transaction just like that. If by accident there is a wrong transaction happened to any of these customers, 
You cannot just update it or delete it. There are always these people do in the bank or in any financial institution. They will make adjustment. They will insert another transaction to fix the error. So here I will create another trigger also and instead of delete and update. That happens prior to delete or update any transaction in this table. So I will also declare the error message as usual. And if the count of the transaction from the deleted table are more than zero, I will just raise this message. Transaction cannot be deleted, neither updated. Even if the user has read write permission for this table, they cannot delete or update this transaction. I will roll back the transaction and I go to the error message like before. So here I handled this table transaction table with two triggers instead of insert and instead of delete and update let us try that so here we don't have any transaction nothing and this customer number 10 where we do some transaction the balance is three thousand dollars for example i will insert a new transaction for this table I will insert only these values customer id account transaction date time transaction amount and is going true or false the customer id is 10 account number four and here is the get date and here is the amount let us make it for example 500 dollars and it is out going okay i will insert that and let us check the email here it is transaction id number one dear mr mrs nancy holman i would go in transaction 500 dollars at this date at this time and the current balance is 2500 is that true let us check that here it is that's true the balance become 2500 and the transaction number one is 500 and the email id is 36 where i can track it in the msdb database okay we'll make another transaction we'll make that zero regardless if it is in going or outgoing we will see what happened nothing it will say here the message amount cannot be zero and of course the transaction is rolled back in the trigger if we check the two tables again everything is the same okay we will put something like uh, incoming transaction for 500 dollars insert that and here the message came and the email was queued let us check the email again here is another one same thing but here it says incoming transaction amount 500 the new balance in three thousand dollars good let us make a big transaction let us say we need to take three thousand five hundred dollars from this account and execute that nothing it say insufficient balance it is three thousand and the transaction amount is 3500 so it won't work so it rolled back the transaction and let us see what happened here nothing we have only one outgoing the first one and the second one is incoming for 500 dollars okay now try to update or delete one of these transactions here I will try to delete transaction number one so nothing it ended up in the trigger the trigger prevented me to delete it okay if I want to update the amount for this transaction for example to this number also same thing I cannot do any delete or any update for this transaction let us check that again here it is everything remains the same so with instead of triggers we always have a very good control on the data consistency and the logic of the data and not to allow any unauthorized transaction to happen 
we cover that today and next time we will try to cover the DDL uh, trigger I hope that was useful I know it's a longer video but I hope you enjoyed it thank you very much for watching and of course if you like the video please subscribe and share it might be useful for somebody else see you next time Hossam انت اللي لمعت النجوم بتنفعني انت اللي كل ما فيك بيقوي بيعلي انت اللي عمره ما لحظه خاف انت اكتشاف ويمين يقدر عليك انت احلى حاجه فيك قولها